I do. All set. Welcome everyone uh, to the Design Review Board meeting of October 30th, 2023. My name is Erica Zikas and as the chair of the Amherst Design Review Board, I'm calling this meeting to order at 5.01 p.m. The meeting is being recorded and will be made available via the Town of Amherst uh, YouTube channel and minutes are being taken. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended again by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. A hyperlink to the hearing will be posted on the town's online calendar. Board members, I will take roll call. And when I say your name, answer affirmatively. Uh, Catherine Porter. Here. Lindsay Schnarr. Here. Karen Winter. Here. Uh, Eric Zekas here. Pat Auth. And Pat is not present. All right, board members, if technical issues arise, we may need to pause temporarily to fix the problem and then continue the meeting. If the discussion needs to pause, it will be noted in the minutes. Please use the raise hand function to ask a question or make a comment. I will see your request and call on you to speak. After speaking, remember to remute yourself. The general public comment item is reserved for public comment regarding items that are not on tonight's agenda. Please be aware, the board will not respond to comments during the general public comment period Public comment should, could also be heard at other times during the meeting when determined appropriate. Please indicate that you wish to make a comment by clicking the raise hand button when public comment is solicited. If you've joined the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate that you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your phone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when you're finished speaking. Residents can express their views for up to three minutes or at the dis discretion of the design review board chair. If a speaker does not comply with the guidelines or exceeds their allotted time, their participation will be discontinued from the meeting. Tonight's agenda includes the following. We have two applicants, uh, FY 2024-07, Gabe Krauss from Gabe's Underground to install three signs at various entryways uh, at 23 to 25 North Pleasant Street. And uh, 2024 08 from the town of Amherst to construct an ADA compliant accessible trail at the former Hickory Ridge Golf Course. We'll then move on to approval of meeting minutes from September 25th and October 6th, general comment, public comment period, um, and other business not anticipated. So we can get started. Um, is somebody from Gabe's Underground uh, with us this evening? Yes, and Angie Hunter just raised her hand, so I'm going to promote her to panelists. Great. And uh, for the public, um, Pat Auth has joined us. Hi, Pat. Welcome. All right, welcome, Andrea. Are you here to represent Gabe's Underground? Yes. Sorry, my lighting is not good. I'm going to get rid of my background. All right. Blur. Okay, there we go. Great. Well, uh, Ms. Hunter, we're glad to have you. Um, are you able to do a screen share and share your documents, or would you prefer that we do that for you? Um, I prefer you do that because I actually, I have them, but I, I think they're <clears throat> they were sent to everyone. Um, yes. Yeah, they're part of the record. Um, all right, so we're now we're seeing your uh, application page, and then we also have uh, this document and this one. Yes. So where would you like to begin? We're going to invite you to just uh, kind of present your proposal to the design review board, and then we'll have some conversation. Okay. Uh, basically, we need three signs. It looks like four, but there's an awning, the two drawings on the bottom, <clears throat> that's not a good representation. There's actually some color in there. Um, the, the two drawings on the bottom are the side and the front of the awning. Mm -hmm. And the drawing at the top is um, 
going to be the large sign that will be over the in front of the overhang um, that will be lit by a couple of a few gooseneck lights. Um, and yeah, it's a, <laughs> that's kind of a low quality re representation. Um, at the bottom of the, this particular screen that you're showing is the is called the overhang. Um, and see if you see where it says Hazel's Blue Lagoon, mm -hmm. we're going to replace that with a lightweight material um, with our logo. And the in the upper right hand side of that that page where it says awning, there will be something uh, on the side there that faces the camera. And to the right of that is considered the front of the awning. And so we'll have a logo in both of those places. And then in the left-hand corner, you can see the old Hazel's sign. It's a very small space. Uh, it just kind of indicates that that is another entrance. Um, and we, we're gonna replace that sign as well. You mentioned that there's some color that's not represented in these. Yes, that, renders. that's Could kind of a low resolution. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just it was asking you to kind of fill us in on the. Okay. Um, yes, that, that scan is kind of a low resolution scan. <clears throat> um, the, where you see green is going to be blue. Everything else will be white. Um, the word underground is intended to look like it's distressed. And the word Gabe's is going to be, it's not going to be distressed like it shows on the screen. Um, if I had my art file, maybe that would have been good because I could show you a higher resolution version. Um, so anyways, does anybody have any questions at this point? Yeah, thank you for, for walking us uh, through those. Could you, my first question is, could you describe the blue like in the absence of, uh, I, my concern is uh, readability and like kind of contrast from the, yes. the, the, the black and the blue. The, the blue is going to be um, high contrast so that it shows up on the black background, um, not representative of this green that's there. Um, the, the blue is probably closest to, um, it's going to be much lighter. It's going to be something closer to a royal blue, mm -hmm. which is, it's a medium blue and it would show up quite nicely on a black background. Would you say kind of akin to the blue? Sort of like that, sort of like that color, but lighter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other DRB members, would you like to share comments or ask questions? Let me know. Lindsay. Hi. Um... Well, it's exciting to see that there's something new happening in this space. And I like the idea of the brick kind of against the distressed underground and agree with Erica that the readability of Gabe's is, um, it's very difficult given what's shown. So I'm glad to hear that there is a different color being proposed and that this is a lower resolution image than um, what we might expect. Um, because given just this image, I would say it's, it's really hard to read. Right. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but I mean, otherwise I'm, I'm fine with it. I just would encourage whatever that color of blue is to be as, um, as much of contrast as possible, like almost an electric blue feels appropriate, something that really is gonna stand out and kind of be an eye catcher and um, help with the clarity. Um, especially I think given the distressed nature of the underground, having something that's really clean and crisp as a contrast for the Gabes would be, would be nice. I agree. That's all I have. Yeah, I would agree with Lindsay. Uh, everything she said, I'd second that. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I think it's a nice idea to also have some text on the side of the awning. So I'm glad to see that that's happening because I think it'll draw people in. Right. 
particularly where that location is, you yeah. catch you need to catch every eye you can back in there. So they just okay. If there aren't any other, well, I'll say first, <laughs> are there any other comments? And if there aren't, would somebody like to um, make a motion to approve? I move that we approve the uh, presentation with the suggestions that uh, have been made and uh, already agreed upon. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? You say aye, raise aye. your hand. Aye. Great, it's a unanimous. Ms. Hunter, thank you for presenting your project. And um, when do you imagine you to be opening? We would like to open sometime in November. That's exciting. Yes. Well, thank you for presenting this evening and um, we'll see you in November. Thank you. Thanks. Take care. Thank you, you too. All right. That might be a record. I know. <laughs> Super speedy. <laughs> that was like five minutes, I think. I was looking at the time throughout the whole process, so. That was lovely. All right. So um, mm -hmm. I know that there are some representatives from the town of Amherst here. I don't know if anybody else needs to be brought in uh, for the next project presentation. I'm not seeing anybody in attendance at all in the audience. So it's just us nine panelists on the meeting. Okay. Um, so we do have um, Jennifer Mullins and David Zomek from the town of Amherst that are going to present on the proposal. Um, so Take it away. Great, and, thank you. Um, yeah, welcome, uh, uh, Jennifer and, and Dave. Would you like to drive the presentation or would you prefer that I put the documents up? Um, Jennifer, I think, would, would you prefer? I do it? have documents to share. So if you can make me a co-host or however it works on, on your end, um, I'd be happy to share some images so you should be able to do that jen uh, without oh, okay. being a co-host so if you did oh, it right, right now it should work for okay. you okay i usually um okay i get it i'm not usually in this position on the meetings <laughs> okay <laughs> so, so erica what? perhaps while jennifer is working on that i i could do a little intro of the project Please. if that would be helpful yep when so, you get us started um, Thanks everybody for having me. I'm Dave Zomek. I'm the assistant town manager and, and kind of the overall project manager for the Hickory Ridge redevelopment projects. I'm joined uh, here tonight by Jennifer Mullins, our permit administrator. And uh, we wanted to give you a, just a brief overview of what's happening at Hickory um, and then talk specifically about really the a small area um, off of West Pomeroy Lane that is gonna be kind of the, the welcoming area and um, the area where most people will come by 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 vehicle, by car. Um, so really quickly, um, I'm sure you're all familiar with Hickory. It's 150 acres off of West Pomeroy Lane. The town purchased it about two years ago. Um, we are actively developing uh, what I call a comprehensive plan for the entire property. It sounds like a lot of acreage, but when you actually get into it and look at uh, the riverfront land, the vernal pools, the flood plains, the estimated and priority habitat, it really shrinks quite rapidly uh, down to just a few buildable acres. Um, having said that, uh, the town entered the process to acquire the property um, with solar already planned for about 26 acres. So there will be two solar fields on the property. The town is uh, managing uh, the company that is um, developing that solar, and we will get what's called a pilot for the pilot um, payment in lieu of taxes for the solar that uh, is developed on the property. So with that said, we have all the rest of this this uh, template, this uh, wonderful, beautiful area to look at and see what we can do with it to benefit the residents of Amherst. So what we wanna start with is a trail system. And that trail system has been developed with the planning staff and the conservation staff. And that's what we wanted to talk about tonight. Um, and Jennifer has that trail system uh, up on the screen right now. And specifically, we wanted to talk about two areas, one, 
is on the far left, and I don't know if Jennifer can can drive the cursor here. That area near sheet eight is going to be a fully accessible loop trail. This is being funded by CPA, Community Preservation Act dollars, and uh, a park grant through the state. And so, uh, Jennifer, maybe you could circle the clubhouse and the parking lot in the lower central part right Here. there. Yes. Um, this is so the parking lot, and this is the clubhouse currently. And so that's the area that will remain the main welcoming um, uh, area for people to visit the site. It'll really be the only parking for the site because we're limited by frontage, zoning, uh, and access at other points um, uh, on the property. The clubhouse will eventually come down. We're seeking funding for that right now. It is it is unusable and, and was in such terrible shape that uh, we, we can't uh, use that for other purposes, but we will be developing an accessible trail. People will come in off of West Pomeroy, they'll park uh, in the parking lot, They'll be uh, they'll be able to access a large welcoming kiosk at the uh, star right there, the red star, and then they'll proceed to the left or to the west toward Hadley, if you will, all the way down this uh, crushed stone path. If you've ever been to the Conti Trail over in Hadley, mm -hmm. um, uh, which is fully accessible, we envision this to be quite similar to that. Along the trail, there will be informational signage guiding people uh, as to what they might see. There'll be benches. Um, eventually, we hope to have a small um, uh, small uh, um, pergola or, or a pavilion out on the site. We don't have funding for that yet, but that's somewhere in the future. So this will be about a three quarter loop trail around the, the Western portion of the property following the Fort River and then making your way back through some old, you can see the old sand traps on the map, uh, and then make your way back uh, eventually after walking, hiking, biking, bird watching, running uh, back to the parking area and your vehicle. The other section of the trail, um, we're calling the North-South Connection, and this will go all the way, eventually all the way from the parking lot all the way up to the northeast quadrant of the property, which is up um, in the right-hand corner of your screen. And that will take you eventually, with some easements that we're, we're working to secure, that will take uh, visitors or allow visitors from the north to access the property from East Hadley Road. So residents of anywhere along East Adley Road, Columbia Drive, points north of, of East Adley Road, the apartment complexes of Mill Valley, the Brook and Renew, we'll all be able to access that trail and come all the way down, enjoy the, the assets of the property, go fishing, go for a hike, go for a bike ride. And eventually they'll be able to access the village center over at Pomeroy Village Center where the new roundabout is and get a bite to eat at El Comolito or pick up a gallon of milk at the convenience store or anything else that they might need in the village center, they'll be able to do by walking or biking. So most of the, um, the things that we'll be adding vertically to the property really are simple um, kiosks like you would find at any trailhead in Amherst. We'll have, a, as I said, the, the welcoming kiosk at the beginning and then small signs throughout the property directing people um, as to, you know, which way to go um, or whether they might, you know, for instance, see some wildlife in this particular area or something about the Fort River, the geography or the ecology of the site. And so this is a cut sheet from um, our design packet um, and you can see kind of standard kiosk format, which we've used before. I think um, the most recent thing we brought before the DRB was for the Sweet Alice parking lot over on Bay Road. If you've been over there, um, this will be very similar with a welcoming kiosk in the center and then small directional signs on posts throughout the trail. And we have a couple of samples of what uh, a structure in the future might look like for 
folks to get out of the out of the sun or out of the rain or have a small school group meet there uh, or have a picnic under uh, one of those structures. As I said, I don't think we have the budget for that right now, so that might be added in the future. So maybe I'll stop there. If Jennifer, um, in my my quick overview, if I missed anything, please feel free to add. Um, I think um, there will be some bridges, right, Dave, and some some uh, boardwalk type paths that yes. will span some of the wet areas and and um, the uh, in here. Thanks for the reminder. Yes, a big part of this project is ecological restoration. Um, and there are a number, you know, a golf course is a golf course. And a golf course, the goal was to have flat, dry, open areas for playing the sport. So they needed fairways, uh, dry fairways and dry greens. So part of our work is, and you've, if you've driven by Hickory, you've seen uh, that nature is taking over quite rapidly. <laughs> um, and it is one of the most unique e ecological areas in the town. We have over a mile of frontage on both sides of the Fort River. So that was one of the, the driving forces here to purchase the land is, is to preserve the ecology, but also to connect people to it because it's basically been a private uh, um, parcel for 60 plus years. So as Jennifer noted, we'll be pulling out some of the old culverts which block the flow of water and in their place, we'll be adding new bridges for pedestrians and one new bridge for uh, maintenance vehicles to get out onto the property to um, do periodic mowing or, or um, you know, service birdhouses or, or do any kind of work out on the property. We'll also be sharing the property with the company that will be doing solar. So the entire 26 acre solar field will be um, um, surrounded by uh, fencing to protect that asset and keep people away from the solar the solar panels as well as the solar uh, batteries. So um, there will be many, I, mean, I think we'll be pulling out seven culverts to allow water to flow more freely to the Fort River. And I believe the plan is to reduce the size of the paved area in the parking lot as well, right, Dave? Eventually, yes, we will be we'll be shrinking that parking lot. It's over a hundred cars now. We really don't need that. So we've temporarily used some um, Jersey barriers, and we'll be using those even even more strategically to kind of limit where people can park. Um, you know, sometimes parking areas can become um, kind of nuisances for the police or 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 our staff in terms of parking and trash and and uh, nighttime use. So we'll be making that parking lot, we'll be shrinking the usable space in that parking lot so that, you know, the police department can swing in there at night and quickly assess that there's nobody there that should, shouldn't really be anybody there at night anyway. It's a dawn to dusk facility. Eventually the area around the clubhouse, and I'm I'm kind of going a little farther afield here, but eventually we may, we are likely to look at uh, additional uses of the old clubhouse area. There's been a number of things talked about from affordable housing to the possibility of using the site for a South Amherst fire station. So that will all be covered in the comprehensive plan. But in the meantime, we want to get the trails going and we have CDBG funding and state funding to get that going. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, you mentioned in your opening, Dave, um, that signage would be included, and that's something that we often discuss here on the DRB. I'm wondering if you have any indication or any examples of um, the signage that you'll be installing. We should have a few more for you, honestly. Um, I think we had that cut sheet, and I don't know, Jennifer, if you grabbed any of the the signs from our previous project say at Sweet Alice, because that those would be the best examples. Yeah, let me see. Um, let me just poke through here and see there the, you know the. There I are think, so I think many. Rob Mora, I was not involved in that submittal to the DRB, but I think Rob Mora might have brought that yeah. to you when we did the parking lot. I just know that the town has put a lot of. Um, effort and resources into having a, 
a signage language. And since this is town property, it would be nice to see that extended to here and something that I'm particularly interested in seeing. While Jennifer's looking for that, I'm wondering if you could just kind of indicate to us where the solar is going. Or I don't have, I don't think I have oh. control of the cursor, but Jennifer. Yeah, so I can't, so we have to, <clears throat> let's see. Well, I, I'm not finding a file marked signage. Um, we can certainly, uh, you know, look up those images and get them to you. I have to find my, can you still see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, because <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Hang on one second. Here we go. Okay. So the question was about the solar and the location. Is that correct? Yeah. And I believe we're talking about this vicinity. Is that right, Dave? Uh, yes. Near sheet seven, sheet seven, that entire open field will be solar. And then the big open field right in the middle of the screen. I can't see your cursor, Jennifer. Uh, right here. Can you see it now? I cannot. Sheet see. six. Uh, no, if you go to the... To the right of that, there's a big open field. I'm sorry, to to the to the right, to the east, toward the yep. river. Go yep. toward the river. There's a big right here. Oh, uh, sorry, where it says sheet eleven. Oh uh, no, you're too far. It's right smack dab in the middle. Oh, of all right that. here, right yeah. here. Yes. Ah, there you go. Thank you. Oh, look at that. So those will be the two solar areas. Near sheet seven, and then where the uh, where the uh, circled red is. Okay, okay. great. Thank you. Um, all right, I should uh, open it up to DRB members for questions and comments. Um, I see Lindsay's hand. Lindsay, go ahead. No, we cannot hear you. you want start over, unmute. <laughs> oh. um, I just said thank you for presenting this. It looks like a lot of thought has gone into it, and I love the Conti Trail, and um, it's very exciting to see. Um, I'm mainly curious about what kind of feedback you're looking for from us in terms of what stage you're at in the approvals process. Um, and if there's some guidance on kind of the specific scope of, of what you'd like for us to respond to. I think the main thing, and I realized <clears throat> I was opening, um, we would have some, some samples of some of those previous signs. We've used the town seal, um, the maroon background, uh, the town flag or, or seal, if you will. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. The one that hangs in the state house. Are you all familiar with that one? Yeah. Um, so we've used that on our signs for conservation area, trailheads and parking areas and um, trail signs. And we could get you that, we could send that to through um, Rob Wachilla to you. Um, I think the main thing is just kind of getting feedback on, on that kind of thing, consistency. Again, we're 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 in a sense we're we're reusing the some of the facilities we 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 don't have the funding obviously to create new parking areas we're going to reuse the parking area that was for the clubhouse the clubhouse will stay for the time being and what we've tried to do is direct people where we want them to go um with a central kiosk as jennifer pointed out with that um that star on the on the on the trail map. And then along the way, there'll be various signs that, you know, keep people on the loop trail and um, inform them about what's happening, you know, things, ecological things, what to look for along the Fort River, birds, mammals, things of that sort. Um, so I think we probably need to get you a few examples of those before you can give us a little more um, direct feedback. And I'm happy to, we're happy to do that. Um, that just, just to round out that question. Um, yeah, that, that does make sense. And I, I think as an overview, it's pretty clear what your intentions are. And it, um, I'm, I'm curious if 
you're also looking for input in terms of ideas for um you know features of of the trail um, or if you're really just focused on kind of giving us an overview and looking at signage once that's available um by features what could you be more specific sure so um I mean, I love the idea of having signage for the wildlife um, to look out for. Um, I'm thinking of another trail, um, the one that connects puffers to the waterfall to the Mill River mm -hmm. that I found. And there's a storyboard um, sequence that's pretty engaging for children and families to walk along and the stories rotate and there's um, lots of different themed walks that occur with that being um, a feature of that of that particular trail. Um, if there was yeah, I, I think the short answer is we're very open to creative ideas like that. We worked with Coles um, on that storyboard. Um, I believe her name was Hannah. She was the placemaking staff person at Coles for a number of years. I believe she's moved on, but uh, I worked with the Conservation Commission to give, give them permission to do that storyboard, and I hope that will continue. I think the we're under a little uh, time pressure to get the trails done. We need to get the, the two central trails, the loop trail to the left or to the west, and the, the connecting trail up to the apartment complexes. We need to have them done by because of the grant deadlines by June 30th, 24. So we're we're under some time pressure to get those done. So I think, and we're also under some financial pressure because these grants were written a year and a half ago and with cost increases, we are probably gonna need to be pretty frugal about what we can afford in phase one, if we call this phase one, and then in future phases. So I think, we're going for the basics at this point. We want welcoming kiosks and directional signs so that people don't get lost out there. It's it's a big place if you don't know it, 150 acres. And you're not gonna get lost lost, but you certainly could end up, you know, over a bridge you didn't expect to go over or get turned around out there if it's getting dark or something. So we want informational kiosks at the beginning with a large trail map and then directional signage along the loop and around the along the north south trail and then i think we'll enhance those as funding becomes available and we get more community involvement so the short answer is yes the longer answer is we might have to do it in phases because i think our funding is tight and our timeline is tight if that makes, makes sense yes definitely yeah it does it does make sense and thank you for that question Lindsay because I think it gives us some frameworks for conversation and um Karen I see your hand um but I just want to say like BRB members let's focus on you know all the questions that we need to to ask um but that our design review is really about the kiosk um, not so much the layout of the paths and things like that, or um, perhaps about uh, questions about bridges and, and, and signage and things like that, but um, Karen. Yeah, so this question is actually about what what are the trails going to consist of? Are, you're not planning to pave any trails, are you? Oh, uh, that's, if I could, Erica, that's a great question. So. We're actually removing pavement. Um, the trails, uh, the, the cart paths, the former golf cart paths were a combination of, of, of crushed stone, trap rock, gravel, and um, pavement. And so we're actually planning as part of our ecological restoration to remove a number of the trails that were paved because they're impervious and they're just more impactful. So, um, the entire loop trail um, on the lower left will be crushed gravel. Um, it'll be compacted crushed gravel. Very simple, uh, not unlike parts of the Conti Trail over in Hadley, if you will. Um, or, uh, for instance, uh, I love the trails at the Emily Dickinson Museum off of Main Street in Amherst. Very similar to those, six feet wide with a sub base and then a, a top coat of uh, 
of uh, very fine crushed stone so that people in walkers and wheelchairs will be able to navigate them. And then um, we have what we call single track trails, which will simply be a conservation um, 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 grass, if you will. Um, so for instance, around sheet seven up in the upper left-hand corner, you can see that yellow trail. That entire trail will be single track mode path and it'll be perfect in the winter for cross-country skiing. There, um, there will be a couple of places where we will leave the bituminous um, and uh, because it's in very good condition and we feel like it still can be valuable and it would take a lot of money to remove it. So in a couple of places, we're gonna keep it and we may remove it in future years, but we're not adding any impervious bituminous pavement anywhere. We will not be That's paving great. any of this. That's so nice to hear. Thanks, Karen. And Pat? Yes, I think my question was answered when about talking about the surface of the paths mm -hmm. uh, to assure that they're handicap accessible. We are, we, are, uh, we are going for as much accessibility as we possibly can. We can't make all of the trails fully accessible, um, frankly, because of grade changes and cost. So, but the loop trail to the left, lower left will be accessible and the main trail coming down from East Hadley Road will be accessible. And that will get people out to West Street um, over near, it says sheet 12. If you see on the right hand side, it says sheet 12 and the trail goes from purple to, to black. And black is, um, if you are going down that black section, if you're going down West Street um, on your way to the new roundabout, there is a um, sewer pumping station access road there. And so we're gonna use that. Um, we're working with DPW and we will, we will sign and paint part of that access road, which is quite wide so that pedestrians, hikers can use that to get out to West Street and the town um, just funded new sidewalks along West Street all the way up to Crocker Farm School. So it, it really dovetails nicely with new sidewalks to get people either north to Crocker Farm School or south to the village center down near the Moan and Dove and El Comolito and, and Mission Cantina and other, um, you know, there's a laundromat and other amenities down in the village center. But it does strike me that we need to send you some of the cut sheets from our signs because I know that is, uh, you know, a, a major focus of the DRB, and and I think we can get those to you. I will say while I while I'm in front of you, I wish I magically had the funding to redo all of our signs at all of our conservation areas because it is quite a hodgepodge. I'm not proud of the variety, shall we say of signs throughout our town. I would love to have them all be uniform, standardized, clear, accessible, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And we're, it's it's a goal of mine, but it's it's a pretty big nut to fund and and get going. We've we've interviewed some designers. Um, we've worked with the Kestrel Trust as well because I think they've done some really nice work with their kiosks and um, they're willing to help us on some of these as well, so. Mm -hmm. and Pat, did you want to continue? Because your hand is still up. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm doing this on my iPhone, and it's a little, little different. No than worries. No my worries laptop. Sorry about that. But thank you for noticing that. I just call. didn't want to cut you off. No, um, not at all. Thank you. All right. And Catherine, do you have any thoughts to share? I'm just agreeing about the signage. It would be great to see some signs and. Uh, I just have to uh, agree with David that the signage in Amherst needs help, and this might be a way to jumpstart it. But other than that, I have nothing to say about the uh, plan. It looks very good, right. but it would be good for us to see some signage examples. Yeah, I'm going to agree on that point. I think that it's, um, you know, when, when those are, are ready, we could have a, a, a quick meeting to to review those. Um, I have a couple of maybe rapid fire questions. Um, I We're not seeing the bridge design and I don't know that 
the DRB really needs to, um, you know, extend our purview uh, over them. But I'm curious just about what materials you'd be using for the bridges. Yeah. Um, so we'll have three different kinds of bridges, all two out of three quite simple designs. Yeah, one's, for, um, one's for cars, trucks. Uh, one will be for trucks, one will be, and that'll double as a pedestrian bridge. Another one will be simply a pedestrian bridge. Um, and then a third will be a boardwalk, a raised boardwalk over mm -hmm. a wetland area on the loop trail to the uh, lower left of your screen. Um, uh, the the two the two bridges um, closest to the clubhouse will be pretty simple low profile um, low profile pressure treated uh, bridges. Um, we can certainly send the, those plans to Rob Wachilla, uh, mm -hmm. and feel free to take a look at those. Um, the other the boardwalk which will go over the the wetland uh, at about sheet eight in the lower left hand corner if you see that green area mm -hmm. there's about a, an 80 foot long span we we have to get over a wetland okay. and so that we're hoping and this is kind of uh where I, I will use the word hope very strongly we are hoping to use um helical piers and create a big bridge with helical piers if you're familiar with them they are Kind of like law, you know, big screws that you screw into the ground, very minimal impact in a wetland. Um, and we're hoping to be able to afford, uh, I will say, in the bidding helical piers. Whether we will achieve that or not in this bidding climate, I'm not sure, but very low impact can be screwed into a wetland. And then the bridge uh, or the boardwalk, I should say, the boardwalk is attached to those uh, posts that are screwed into the ground. And this is a pretty Pretty common. Um, it's getting to be more common in wetland boardwalks all over the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it avoids pressure treated lumber, at least touching the ground. It is not strong enough for vehicles to go over. So that bridge would simply be for pedestrians. <clears throat> These are some other images that I had <clears throat> was tossing around. And I don't know how closely they mimic what was, you know, what Dave has envisioned, but this is a file that came with this information packet. Um, yeah, these are the files done by our landscape architect. And um, yeah, that's a great one to stop at. So the loop trail, this is this is the design of the loop trail. This would be a six foot wide crushed stone path with simple benches. Um, um, yeah, we, I, Again, I we don't have we don't have the detail on the signs, and I know we'll get that to you. And I apologize okay. for not having that. All right. Um, yeah. So my other rapid fire yes. <laughs> questions were about those um, uh, benches. I don't know if the town has a a, a bench standard for um, public outdoor spaces, natural spaces. Um, it. I imagine that like. Sweet Alice, this is going to be a carry in, carry out situation. So we won't have like trash cans around, but um, will there be um, bike parking, like a, a bike lock uh, rack? Sorry. And is there any existing lighting around the parking area? I know you said it's really a dawn to dusk place, but uh, dusk falls hard and fast these days. And I just, um, safety around the, the parking uh, seems important. Yeah, so let me take those in order. So um, we're treating the, the benches. Um, and again, we can get you, I'm just making a couple of notes, we can get you the bench style. Um, and I'm not, I, this is more kind of for broad, um, I don't, you normally don't get into bench style, but I think you're just, the group is kind of interested in in what it might look like, correct? I think th we we are interested in the bench style, given that this okay. is town property, and like if there's mm -hmm. a if we begin to have a, a language of of town mm. property, or if there is like, you know, it's just the strategy of what's looks good and is affordable for this particular condition. And I think that gotcha. there's an argument to be made that we kind of have a language. Gotcha. So in short, the short answer in your rapid fire is. Um, 
we haven't selected the bench style yet. It will it will likely not be the same as say Kendrick Park or Groff Park because we view those more as a recreation areas and this is more of a conservation area. So we will get you that bench style. We are still kind of in our staff meetings talking about that and it hasn't gone out to bid yet. And we hope to have it out to bid in December. So we'll get you bench style ideas. Yes, the answer on bike loops at the parking area for sure. We will have those and those are fairly standard now, I think. Uh, we we came in to the DRB with a parking lot at Podic, Catherine Cole, and we put in a, a loop or two there, a bike loop. We also did a bike loop at Sweet Alice Conservation Area and we came in with uh, bike loops there. You know, the pretty standard black um, style and, and I apologize, I'm not a landscape architect. Um, and then lighting, we currently do have some minimal security lighting at Hickory Ridge. Uh, it's mostly to illuminate the building. And we, honestly, we haven't, re since the building is not going to be there as a permanent fixture there, we've not considered what would happen long-term. Short-term, the building is not going anywhere because I don't have funding to remove it yet. So short term, there will be lighting there, but I think long term, there there may be the need for say one light there or something of that sort. Um, again, we're we're probably looking at co-locating some other town uses there. Um, one of the images that Jen, maybe you could go back to, which I I love, it, I think it's the one to the far right. It shows. Uh, zip through those real quickly. These were done by our landscape architect. Ah, there we go. This, oops, one back. That one actually is near the parking lot. You can see the parking lot in the foreground. And this is an area that used to be the driving range at Hickory Ridge. And we envision it to be uh, with, with a modest improvement, an area for performances, for plays, for musicals, an outdoor um, amphitheater space. Um, and the parking would be very close. And you can see uh, kind of a, the dream, if you will, of a, of a an amphitheater with an accessible path over to that amphitheater. So that might be phase three or four in this project. We don't have it funded yet. Um, and as I said, we're just trying to meet meet these grant deadlines for now. But I'm hearing bench styles, some images of pond loop, uh, bike loops, and some images of signs. Um, which we can all we can get from some of our previous submittals for Poda, Catherine Cole, conservation areas, and Sweet Alice. That's great. Um, I see Lindsay's hand, and sorry, Lindsay, that I kept talking before, and you had your hand up before. So. No, it's fine. You actually asked one of my questions, which was about the benches. Um, so yes, I, I think seeing bench style, and then also I would add to the list railings. Um, and it it, it I. And remembering that at Conti, the railing and the bench often are one and the same, um, which is a really, I think, a, a nice precedent um, in terms of how it might, you know, work to respond to the landscape at certain moments to have kind of a, a railing that extends out into a bench platform or, or um little seating nook or something like that. So as opposed to, you know, actually picking out something and putting it in place that's manufactured, um, if it's more of a built in place. Um, so I do think that railings are an important thing to look at as well. No, we'll get that. We'll get that detail to you. Um, I will say that most of the benches are standalone. Um, unlike Conti, uh, so much of Conti is a raised boardwalk and really um, the loop the loop trail and the trail from north to south, the vast majority of, of that will just be crushed stone paths. So the only area that will be will be raised will be the boardwalk over that wetland to the to the west. Um, and I'll have to look what well, Jennifer and I can look at the details on that. Mm -hmm. um, but as you, if you're familiar with Conti, which is a wonderful, um, which is a wonderful uh, uh, trail over, I think it's a mile and a half to two miles long. If you do the whole thing, um, a lot of it is raised um, and quite a distance off the ground. We're working with our building commissioner. 
I believe, and and maybe one of uh, one of the members could help me out here, but I believe if the if a boardwalk is raised more than thirty inches, uh, if I'm not mistaken, then it does require a rail. Oh, um, it could yeah. be a little higher than that, but I'm not sure. Not being an architect or a landscape architect. Yeah, I think it's actually less than that. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Um, um. Well, it could be. Yeah. But we're working with our building commissioner on that. Okay. Um. Karen, I'm wondering if this is uh, having benches here would be uh, something that you could reach out to the community and have people dedicate them to loved ones. I think it adds a nice historical touch. It makes it very personal and you could save a lot of money that way. And I'm not sure that the benches all, I mean, there's something to be said for having them be uniform, but there's also something to be said for having this be a very sort of eclectic, wild, not that finished look so that you can have this kind of a bench in this kind of a grotto and this kind of bench in another grotto. And I think if you reach out to the community, there are <clears throat> probably lots of people that would love to memorize, uh, memorialize loved ones in this way. And as far as railings and things, I, I love Conti, but I, I welcome the fact that this is going to be um, a kind of landscape which can be pretty untouched as much as possible and just left as natural. So I would say <laughs> the less hand rates and less sort of man-made constructions in this area, the nicer in a way. Um, yeah, well, yeah, thank we you. Can, yeah. We can definitely take a look at those ideas. Um, we do um, just broader consumption uh, part of the, the comprehensive plan will be an ecological restoration plan for the entire property we already have completed that with a local company and so i mentioned part of that will be removing culverts blocked culverts that have been hampering the movement of water for years in wildlife we'll be um We'll be working with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and Mass Wildlife on uh, stream bank restoration. The Fort River has been channelized and hardened uh, through the years so that some of that hardening material, that riprap, will actually be coming out, not as part of this project, but in collaboration with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and, um, and uh, uh, Mass Fish and Game. Um, we'll look at the benches, Garn. Um, one of the things about standardizing them, um, I, having managed our conservation land for so long, one of the big challenges with with benches is, um, you know, if you build them, they will get used and they will deteriorate over time. So the challenge is, how do we maintain those over time? I'm I'm not a big fan of park benches uh, in conservation areas. I think there's a place for those, and and we have that at Kendrick Park and Sweetser Park and uh, Groff Park. Um, but the challenge is what will weather well out there, and and what um, what will what will last. Um, we've also we've moved away a little bit, certainly in conservation land, uh, from memorial benches, um, um, in part because the feeling is that memorial memorial plaques that are visible, um, in a way, privatize public space. Um, so what we've moved toward is a different model, which is if a family would like to give a memorial bench or a memorial tree, they can do that without the plaque. They'll know that bench overlooking this beautiful beaver pond or this vista is for their family member. But we try to avoid putting the plaque on it because it just, um, in many folks' minds, uh, privatizes uh, permanently protected public space. So in parks, we still do it, but on conservation land, we try to not do it, but we offer the family that alternative to say, if you'd like to, to fund a bench, for instance, for a thousand dollars or whatever style of bench you choose, you can do that. We'd love to do that. And you'll know that bench is for your loved one or even your, I don't know, we've had people dedicate uh, things in memory of their dogs and pets. So things like that. So we kind of got create creative. If that makes sense to you. Yeah. Thank you. Interesting to know. Um, yeah, and I think collectively that 
what what I'm hearing is that there may be a lot of ideas for things, but what we'd love is it to for for you all to present to us what your design strategy is. And so whether it's an eclectic mix or all one um, that we just like to know that there's some design strategy heading into this project. Um, I've got four things, bench style, bike loop style, yep. images of signs, railings, images of or, or plans for railings on boardwalks. Yep. And then I would add um, kind of kiosk design. Yeah, we caught a glimpse of that. Um, yeah, and I, I would the one thing I will say is that what I appreciate so much that um, a great deal of this trail is um, accessible to uh, different types of mobility and and body types and things like that. And some uh, benches with arms can actually help folks to get up and get down and things like that. And so while I appreciate that your kind of distinction between a park bench and a conservation bench, uh, there may be some value, especially on the accessible trail to think about accessibility. Oh, absolutely. The the benches will have arms. Okay. Uh, they, Conti um, is very, very deliberate in their um, their style of benches, as, as uh, one of your members pointed out there. They're part of the the railing in many cases, but they include multiple hand, uh, the design includes multiple uh, places for folks who, seniors or others who may need more support to stand. So we will include those for sure. Well, I'm not sure that we have um, much to, to vote on um, here, but I think you've heard some great feedback and uh, appreciate your answering all of our questions. It's been, I know we've a lot um, at you and it's going to be a really exciting project. I, I do, I feel if the, if the kiosk design is what you showed us um, and it, we've approved the one at Sweet Alice. So if it's a, a duplicate of that, then that's something that we could approved this evening um i'd love to just come back to you with yeah. all the, a little package of images so you have it all in one place that's, that's yeah. fine with us okay. and if um we'd love to try to sneak back in with you i think before the planning board hears any further discussion so i would treat tonight as kind of an overview of the project and then i'll work with jennifer and and rob to get you more of the details those could be sent via email, and then we could schedule another time to to meet with you all to get into the to the detail if that works. And Rob will help you with the scheduling. We generally meet um, once a month on the the yep. last. What is today? Monday. <laughs> the last Monday of the month. So, so okay. usually we do um, special meetings. So usually, um, you know, we do like a special meeting sometimes if if there's like a time constraint. So. Dave, do you know when that playing board review is supposed to take place for this project? Off the top of my head, I don't, Rob, but we okay. can we can talk with Chris Brestrup tomorrow about that. And if if okay. uh, the members would be willing to maybe sneak in a, a special time to to look at some of the details, if we get you those in advance by email, then we could have another round at this with the specifics of the detail. Okay. Hopefully Sounds before good. the planning board meets, because I'm sure they would love your feedback. It helps inform them as they look at the broader project. Yep. All right. Good. We have a we have a strategy for moving forward. Thank you. Right. Well, there's a lot happening out there. It's um it's a big canvas, and we we you know we got a we did an engage Amherst page on Hickory when we first uh, bought it, and um. We got so much feedback about trails and ski, uh, cross country skiing and zip lines and affordable housing and amphitheaters and community gardens and the list goes on and on. I'm meeting with a group that is interested in a children's mountain biking trail. It's called a pump track. I was not familiar with that before, but they would wonder whether we could fit a pump track out on Hickory. And I'm not sure we can, but I'm meeting with them later this week or next week. So, but the main the main reason we purchased it was 
the special e ecological assets of the property. It has a number of rare and endangered species. It affords us the opportunity to connect people with the village center and with this 150 acre area that can be for picnicking and kite flying and bird watching and hiking and fishing. Um, people swim in the Fort River out there in certain places. So all of those assets can now be part of our, you know, what we can offer the community. And perhaps we might have a fire station there somewhere down the road or affordable housing or a, uh, a community center of some sort. Who knows? That's great. Yeah. I'm... Rob, is it still true that there aren't members of the public this evening? I, I didn't... There are no members of the public. <clears throat> Given the interest, I'm surprised that there aren't um, some folks here who, who wish to share their thoughts. But um, since there aren't, I think that we can close out this part of the conversation and we'll surely see you in uh, a couple of weeks. Great. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Very exciting. Thank you. <laughs> All right, folks. Um, no public comment. Um, so we can move on to meeting minutes and approval. We have two meetings, minutes for two, our two most recent meetings to approve. It's September 25th and October 6th. Did you have a chance to review those before coming tonight or should I share my screen? Three total pages between the two of them, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, Erica, would you mind putting them up, please? Sure. Thank you. All right. So here we have September 25th. This was our first meeting with Botanica Home. So I'll... <laughs> Pause here. So was she going to take down the awning and put brand new awning up? Because uh, I drove by the other day and I was hoping to see her new awning. It wasn't there, but it looked like it was the old awning uh, that had no lettering. That, yes, because, she's going to renovate the old awning. Was okay. I thought she was going to put a brand new yeah. one. Okay, and there. this is th these are the meeting minutes from our first. We met with her twice. We asked her to come back. So the first meeting, we had a number of suggestions for her, which represented. Yeah, the old awning looks a little worn. Not it, it yeah. spots. It's she's putting a new fabric on it eventually, I guess. Okay. And I guess the existing the existing frame still looks pretty good. I mean, yeah. last time I checked it out, I you know I'm thinking it was going to be a total uh, new, yeah, whatever. Yeah. So we asked her to return, and then the second one is uh, Tecaria del Pueblo, a new signage which was approved without <sighs> suggestion. And that one was pretty straightforward too. It's just like a yeah. awning sign with a decal. Yep. And then we did Julie Nolan jewelry. New signage there. And in summary, um, we approved some and asked her to come back if she was going to add additional signage to the small window next to the door. Handwritten gold leafing, which probably takes a while to do, mm -hmm. I imagine. <clears throat> That's good. I move to approve the minutes. Second. Fantastic. All those in favor of approving the minutes from September 25th, say aye. Aye. Okay. aye. Great. That's unanimous. And then we have one more meeting uh, minutes to approve. And the only thing on the agenda was uh, Botanica Home. Yep. 
so I may have lied about the number of pages. That's my bad. You actually have five pages instead of the three, like I suggested, between two minutes, but these look pretty small too, so. No complaints. There you go. And it seems at one point folks had discussion about um, putting the bird where the globe is on the existing blue marble sign. But then I think the discussion was if they did that, the lettering would look kind of small. So they sell it for putting the bird in the middle between Botanica and Homes or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lindsay liked the idea of the bird on top of the A. Yeah, I think yeah. she would <laughs> do that option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But she was going to look at it, but we agreed to approve it as she presented mm -hmm. it that evening. Yeah. Um, Is the word bulb supposed to be bird? Uh, so the bulb was in reference to that little area that kind of curved up on the awning frame. So if you looked at the blue marble sign, you know how you have that one area where it bumps out and there's the, the globe? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I meant by bulb. But if you want me to change that to something else, I could definitely do that. If it's confusing. Um, I th I just... All, I don't know. Did I say that? <laughs> All I remember saying was that I was wanting the bird, wondering if the bird could stay on top of the A. Um, if the because the A was that's what it was, was that the A was still big, but the bird wasn't on mm -hmm. it. And that felt funny. I don't know how I don't know. That's all I remember saying. If the bird could come back and the A could get smaller or something, but let me change that to reflect that point. Just because, you know, I think I remember you, I remember you bring that up and you said you'd like it if the bird was on top of the A. Yeah. But I think somebody else had mentioned putting the bird where the bulb was too. Yeah. And, maybe and I don't know if that of, was you or, in sorry. Lieu of, in lieu of, I think that, um, I remember Catherine asking that question. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe the, um, in lieu of bulb, you could say rounded part of the awning. Okay. But not as my comment. But not as Lindsay's comment, yeah. And you could just change bulb to bird. <laughs> I, I did, I and I still do think it would have been nice to have the, the A just be small and then the bird be on top yeah. instead of, but it's no big deal. Okay. Yeah. I'll make those changes accordingly. Thanks. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay. And then we can approve these uh, yeah. minutes in the next meeting. Catherine, did you have a? I move that we approve these minutes. Before you see the changes? I thought I thought you would finish with these. I thought that's what you asked. Sorry. Yeah. No. <laughs> I say we could. Well, you've made a motion. Would anybody like to second? Karen. I second. Thank you. Okay, so um, all those, all those in favor of approving the minutes as is, say aye. I think we need to revise yeah. them. Yeah. So I can say that motion does not pass. Okay. Um, will we can revise the minutes and revisit them at the next meeting? Although Rob, you're doing that. Well, you could also say what the changes are and just say we'll approve them with these specific changes but you know it's up to you as the board if you would rather do it the next meeting that's also fine but other boards have done it the yeah. way i suggested to i mean it's up to you that's fine um what does the group prefer they're they're your words Lindsay. i'm i'll oh, defer okay. to you i'm fine with moving to approve it with the changes suggested you want to turn that into a motion I move to approve the minutes um, with the changes um, discussed. Okay. Karen. I second. Thank you. Okay, now all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And, and I abstain because I wasn't at the meeting. Okay. 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 Motion Great. passes. Motion passes with one abstention. Marvelous. Okay, that's it. Great. That is it. My favorite board to be on. You're all wonderful. So just a quick question about um, 
if we uh, just for everybody to know, I'm not going to be around the week of Thanksgiving. So if there is an additional meeting that occurs um, for the park review that we just listened to, um, if it could be not during that week or just know that I won't be available. Yeah, thank you. I know it's it does get into a tricky time for scheduling. Um, but I think in general, if I could speak to that, a lot of boards and committees aren't going to schedule for that week anyways. And mm -hmm. our normal meeting is the Monday after Thanksgiving. So would you still be out of town around that time, you I'll think, Lindsay? No, I'll be back at that time. Just okay. So my guess is that it would be any time between today and November 17th at the absolute latest for mm -hmm. a second meeting. Mm -hmm. So are there days of the week that generally don't work for people just so I have an idea? Um, or does it not matter to the group? Mondays are probably my best, but okay. what I can do other nights if you know. same for me. Mm -hmm. Karen? I can't do Wednesdays. I also can't no, do Wednesdays. <laughs> okay, so Wednesdays out of the equation. And Fridays eh, probably don't want to meet on a Friday afternoon. Um so yeah. I'll keep those two days in mind. Mm -hmm. Pat, what about you? Monday Monday is actually the best day for me because it's rare that I have an, a conflict on a Monday. All right. Catherine? Sounds good. Well, it depends on the week. So, yeah. you know, okay. see how it goes. So mm -hmm. Monday sounds like the most ideal, maybe yeah. a Tuesday, but I, I'll keep that in mind. Right. All right. Fantastic. Okay. Let us adjourn. All right. All right. All right. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good night, everyone. Bye.